they literally, they handed me a blue piece of paper and it was like taking an order. Like, oh, how do you want us to do the surgery? Hello, good people. It is Todd Shannon, data scientist, social commentator, sayer of true things, but I still get buckets. Today, I want to talk to you about something that is gut-wrenching. I'm going to show you in just a moment some highlights from an interview that Candace Owens did with a transgender person called uh, Brianna Ivy, I believe is her name, his name. Uh, it's <laughs> Pardon my confusion. You understand why. The thing that is so gut-wrenching about this, and this is by far, I've seen a few of these types of interviews, but this one really was painful to watch. And I will put the link in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. I encourage you to watch the whole thing because it is quite telling. I'm only going to touch on a few highlights. First, before I even get into any of my commentary, let's watch a few clips and see why this is so difficult for me to understand how they can even allow this. A very common theme every time we were in the gender clinic was that you, these surgeries and doing all this young, you won't even really feel, you'll feel, you'll, you'll look like a biological female. You'll be one. And that came up a lot once I got to the bottom surgery mm -hmm. and they made it, they made it feel real. They made it feel like that was a real thing. And they told me that there was a certain technique that is a breakthrough and that it is going to be identical to a typical biological female genitalia. And they said that this is brand new and this is like a miracle almost. He told me like four week, four to six week recovery. Wow. And it was anything but that. I knew even just a month, two months in, something was really wrong. I looked horrible on the outside and everything felt wrong in my body. And I would try and call for help. He just kept saying things were fine. He was like, oh, things are fine. My mom would be there. He was like, oh, this is fine. And I would ask questions. I'm like, what about this pain? Like, I'm still bleeding. Like, I'm still having like discharge coming out. Like, I'm still in so much pain. And he said, oh, it's fine. It'll go away. And then just a few months later, I got to a point where I called him and I said, this pain is not going away. It's getting worse by the day. Now, as you can see from those clips, this person has to say that this person has been done wrong it's such an egregious understatement that it words fail me I, I can't even describe how furious I am just listening to the fact that this person was put through this when all of these responsible parties and I got to be honest with you starting with uh his parents first of all uh his parents failed him first and foremost but secondly there should be a law against this crap. And I, I cannot understand how there's not already. And to give you some perspective on how I look at this is uh, I work in financial services. Okay. I've been working in financial services for nearly 15 years, somewhere, somewhere in that range. My undergraduate degree is finance and uh, I've sold basically almost every type of financial product, mostly from insurance to, uh, to mortgages, to, uh, to bro uh, brokerage products like uh, mutual fund stocks, things like that. So I, I've, I've done it all, okay? And the financial services industry is heavily, in, uh, heavily uh, regulated. And one of the most important factors about the regulation is something called disclosure, right? Disclosure is a prominent feature in almost every aspect of financial regulation. And the whole idea is that whenever there is something that materially impacts the client, with the product or service that you're offering, you have to disclose that. You have to tell them. You have to go over and above to make sure that whatever they are getting, it is not misconstrued as something that it isn't. And most specifically, particularly when it comes to uh, investment products, you have to disclose the risk, okay? So if, if a person is put, let's just say I got a client and they're like 70 years old and they're on a fixed income and I put them into a financial product that has a risk profile that is not appropriate given the fact that they are in an advanced stage of their life and they need to protect their assets and not put their assets at risk. And then if I put someone in a risky product and it wasn't appropriate for them, even if they wanted it, now this is important to understand, even if they ask for it, I have to disclose 
all of the factors of that risk. And I have to make sure that I'm not exposing myself to liability just because they said, I want to be in this. That's not, that's not a good enough excuse because if they said they wanted to be in a product that was risky, but you didn't explain the risk and then they lost their shirt, then you are still subject to liability. Now, this is with respect to financial products. People could lose their money. And so we have all of these laws against that. It is, <laughs> it is beyond comprehension that someone can be allowed to put someone's life at risk just because they asked for something. It's like, oh, well, that's what they wanted. They wanted the surgery, so they got it. You know, they'll never have any uh, sensation in their uh, their general area down there, their 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 sexual area. They'll never have any uh, ability to have children. We're going to sterilize them. They they could die and all that stuff. But we can obscure and mask all of the risks and give someone this type type of surgery just because they asked for it. And there's no liability. There is, <laughs> there are no repercussions for the people who did this. I, I'm telling you, this is the sort of thing that makes me almost want to run for office. And, and this is the thing that makes me wonder, like, what the people, what are these senators and Congress people, like, what are they doing? Do they not see that this is what's happening to this generation? Do they not see? I, I just want to, once again, I want to put this in even more perspective because I don't want this video to become immediately demonetized. Uh, maybe I'll put the picture on the screen here. But uh, this media person made some comments about a, a violent event at a school. And because he was wrong about the things that he said, the, 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 the parents of the victims were awarded something like a billion dollars. Now, this guy doesn't even have a billion dollars, right? But they were awarded these monetary damages because of words he said. He hurt their feelings. I'm, I'm not saying what he did was right, but because he hurt their feelings, now he can never essentially be financially stable again. And this is the sort of damages being awarded. This guy could have died and he has, his, his, his body has been mutilated beyond repair. And these doctors are going to just go scot-free. Uh, make it make sense, please. Can someone make it make sense? This is insane. Anyway, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are, friends. Uh, this this really infuriates me. Uh, and I think that there, uh, you know, <laughs> the old saying, there ought to be a law. There ought to be a law. Okay? Let me know what you think in the comments, friends. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this content. And until next time, friends, God bless you.